Welcome to the weekend and welcome back to our nation's capital, the Washington Monument in the distance. And we're several miles from there at Nationals Park on the banks of the Anacostia River. The Rockies and Nationals meeting over the next three days. And then the Rockies will head on to the Big Apple to take on the New York Mets for four. Rockies will face Jordan Zimmerman tonight. A guy who has had great success in his career against a lot of teams, but in particular the Rockies. He's 5 0 with a 220 lifetime against the Rockies. Southwest batting order brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Charlie's going to lead things off. He's hitting 323 since June 1st. Then Reyes and Arenado in the first inning. And you saw the rest of the group that will face Jordan Zimmerman. His first pitch misses ball one. Well, from Jordan, you're going to get a fastball, slider, curveball mix. And it's not, uh, there's really no secret in what he throws, but he has had success against Colorado, including four starts here. He's 3 0. First pitch is lifted to center field. Easy play out there for Michael Taylor. He's got it and he's one out. Well, Jordan Zimmerman, Huey. One of the top pitchers in the National League will be a free agent at the end of the year, but his last few outings he's scuffled a little bit. Well, he's 0 and 2 with a 5-0-5-0-9 ERA in his last four starts, and his last start against the New York Mets is about four or five pitches that really hurt him. He gave up three home runs, including back to back, in at City Field. He does like to elevate his fastball, so keep an eye on that tonight. He, he'll, he will work up in the zone. To the left handed hitters, it's primarily fastball curveball. To right handers, it's more fastball slider. That pitch in, ball one, so it's one and one on Jose Reyes. Reyes has played a lot of games at Nationals Park, a 301 lifetime average here. And that's on the outside corner. Home plate umpire is the crew chief, Jeff Kellogg. Good umpire. Brian Onora is at first, Alan Porter at second, and Mark Ripperger is at third. One, two, and he goes with a rotting fastball at 94. Jordan Zimmerman's a good story for a lot of reasons, but he's out of a Division three school, Wisconsin Stevens Point. Second round pick out of Wisconsin Stevens Point. Still drafted 67th overall in that draft. The old line, right? Huey, they'll you know find you. That's right. If you could play, they'll find you. He was well, a terrific athlete in high school and leading into college. He was a three sport high school star. Well, that's the other thing they look at, too. Does he play multiple sports? How good of an athlete is he? And what kind of arm does he have? This ball on the ground, the second. Danny Espinosa's got it, two outs. The Nationals kind of a middle of the road defensive team. The one guy that's uh, struggled surprisingly this year is Ian Desmond at short. He's got 21 errors. Worth Taylor and Harper in the outfield. Harper's played a brilliant right field. Yunel Escobar just four errors at third. Danny Espinosa and Ryan Zimmerman tonight on the right side. Of course, Zimmerman used to be a gold glove third baseman. He had some throwing issues. And now he's over at first. Anthony Rendon being given the night off. And there is Bryce. He is not just a one way guy. He is a good defender. He works hard at it. And you know, that was the one knock on him when he first came up. It was like, oh, he's more interested in his hitting. And I, I never thought that was the case. No, I hear some scouts say that. And I was like, no, I, I, I've seen him work out in the outfield. He'll, he'll go get balls. He's got a very strong arm. I, when, the, the one thing for me that's always jumped out about Bryce Harper, ridiculous power. We understand that. He's a hard playing guy. Uh, he'll he'll knock your socks off at second base if he has a chance. There's a base hit to left for Nolan. I asked Nolan before the game. I said, "You always play with a bounce in your in your step. He he loves to play the game. Do you get up even more when you're facing a Bryce Harper, or Mike Trout, another one of the young stars of the game, of which you know he certainly is one of those guys also." And he said, you know, it's good to play a team that, that's a good team where it's a big crowd and, and they're in it. He said, you know, we're going to try to upset the apple cart. Well, that's what you're going to get on this whole road trip. 
So it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me. No. Comes out, and rips a single to start. Uh, well, he was he was joking around, out. joking about it around the batting cage today. He said, "Man, I need to start you know, back legging some stuff, get some hard hit balls." And what's he do? Comes <laughs> right out and does it. Yeah. Cargo misses the fastball. Carlos hitting 317 against righties this year. Oh one and he went around. It's 0 and 2. So many times you talk about our oh, pitcher needs to work down into the zone to be effective. Well that that's true but some guys that can work down and then pop your eye level up and that's when you get those check swings or you're late catching up to the fastball and Zimmerman's one of those pitchers. Arenado took off 0 2 and that pitch was fouled off. Just underway at Nationals Park. Somewhat overcast evening, not, not a threat of rain at all, but it's uh, it's it's also pretty cool, low humidity. You gotta love it. Taking it for August in Washington. Yeah, not gonna argue. And again, he goes after him with a riding fastball. It's one and two. Cargo batting cleanup this year. 345 average, 15 home runs. It's his 44th game in the cleanup spot. Smart call from Cargo. Let it. Don't let the pitcher lull you to sleep. One two and that curveball is fouled off slider. If you will. If he does throw the slider to a left hander it's going to be to that back foot. Take a peek in at the signs. Going for the fastball away. Off the plate. Good eye. Two and two. And you set up off the plate. It's going to get some oohs and ahs from the crowd. Oh, that wasn't. But it was never a strike. Yeah, he, I mean, he, he squared, squared up. He squared up. Wrong. I mean, that's, Ramos, that's the old uh, Maddox, yeah. the Braves, where they would set up. But that's when they used to get that call. Okay. Good job by Jeff Kellogg saying, well, just because he squared him up doesn't mean he set up in the zone. He didn't. He set up off the corner. 2 2. All of a sudden, Nolan is Jose Reyes, I guess, huh? Yes, so you take off one time and then it draws the attention of everybody. Three and two. Well, I can guarantee you he'll be moving now. Well, let's see if they put Zimmerman behind him with the left-handed batter up. Now they're going to keep him holding on at first. Oh, that's good for Cargo. Yeah. It's a bigger hole, and they're not putting the shift on yeah. either. Washington rarely shifts. They shave. They don't shift. And that's pulled foul. Two outs, three and two again on cargo. Swing on and missed, and Zimmerman wins that battle. Rockies get one base runner on the hit by Arenado, nothing else. Jorge De La Rosa to the mound at Nationals Park when we come back.
initially on Yunel Escobar. Escobar came from Oakland in January, the Tyler Clifford trade. And he's had a very fine season for the Nationals. He's played really good defense. He's got a 314 average among the league leaders in the National League in that department. Here's the Southwest batting order for Matt Williams. Danny Espinosa, so versatile, will play any infield spot. He'll bat second. Then Harper, Zimmerman, and Worth. You see that Zimmerman's hitting 213. Worth is 193. Ian Desmond, 217. The three middle of the order guys that have struggled offensively in a big way. Wilson Ramos next. Michael Taylor will bat eight. And then the good athlete Jordan Zimmerman will pitch obviously in bat ninth. So De La Rosa coming off a really good start. Nice bounce back start for De La in St. Louis. Six and two thirds. Just gave up two runs. And didn't walk anybody in that start against the Nationals in his career. He's five and two in the eight starts. So got a pretty good pitching matchup tonight between these two guys and how they fare against the respective ball clubs. One area that, that De La Rosa, you look at him, he has given up 17 runs in the first inning in 18 starts that's about an 80 ERA so that's the it's not unusual for a pitcher to struggle in that first inning because the mound's different from what they have in the bullpen out here but let's keep an eye on that for this first uh, few batters first pitch swinging and they do a lot of that and Nolan comes up with it throws out his counterpart Yunel Escobar this is a very aggressive offensive team in fact they swing at more first pitches by percentage than any team in baseball with one out, we check the Rockies' gloves. Kyle Parker, Rockies getting a feel for what they have in their former number one out of Clemson. He's in left field again tonight. Charlie Blackman and Cargo in the outfield as well. Arenado, Reyes, LeMahieu, and Paulson with Nick Hundley doing the catching. And a lot of the times it's been Mike McHenry catching De La Rosa. But we'll all say before the game, you don't have you know just one guy who's a caddy for another. And it was... Nick's turn to play. He's the regular catcher. He had a day off yesterday, so Nick is back there, and that pitcher's in there for strike one. Eighth game he's caught, De La Rosa this year. Michael has an 11 games caught against De La, or with De La, I should say. Played a good pitch, just missed, evidently down low and away. One ball, one strike. Danny Espinosa and Nolan Arenado work out together in the offseason, both Orange County kids. That is pulled past Nolan in that corner, and it's going to be a double for Danny Espinosa. In fact, he's going to go for three as Parker had trouble with it in the corner, and he's got a triple standing up. They might change that to a double in an air, depending on what they see as it goes down into that corner. We kind of lose sight of it. Looks like Parker had gotten, Kyle's gotten over there. And then next thing we know, he's chasing it back to the wall. All right, that got, you know what, that got through his legs. That would be a double in an air. Wasn't hit particularly hard. We heard it off the end of the bat. Now down in the corner for Kyle. Yeah, he just whiffed it. He just missed it. He'll pick it up. Now give Harper a chance to run on third. Well, with Jordan Zimmerman on the mound, the Rockies will go with the shift and pull the infield in against Harper here in the first inning. And one of the things when you talk to people around the Nationals, and yes, why has Harper made such a big jump this year? It's health, certainly. That on base percentage of 461, reflective of the fact that he will walk a ton. He does not chase pitches out of the zone. He was on base all five times yesterday. Two for two and three walks. It seems like every night, Huey, he's walking a couple of times. Well, that's how you get to be first or second. Just one third on the extra base hit, but that would probably be higher if he was swinging more, not taking the walks. With the 334 average, 72 runs. Got an OPS over 1100. <laughs> Enough said. Enough. In the discussion. Espinosa at third, double and an error officially. 
And that's a strike. So Harper is behind one and two. Another area of improvement. He's hit 320 this year against lefties. His first three years, he hit just 237 left on left. Split finger count for Jorge. And he went with it. And that's the pitch he used to be able to get him to swing at because he was overly aggressive thinking about I need to hit a home run. Well, he's he's hitting a lot of home runs, but to your point, Jeff, he's letting the ball travel. He has seven home runs to left field this year. Not that splitter again. Two two. And it's on the ground a second. The Rockies have put the infield back. And LeMahieu throws the first. Harper has his 69th RBI. This is professional hitting from Bryce Harper, knowing the infield's back. He's got an easy run at third base, and he just hits a ground ball. Goes back to that air, allowing the runner to, to move up from second to third by Kyle Parker. Two outs, nobody on. Ryan Zimmerman will come up. He's missed a lot of time with plantar fascia. Corey Dickerson <laughs> can compare notes. We can have a conversation about that. Just don't make Corey laugh right now with those <laughs> two broken ribs. Off the outside corner, it's two and up. One nothing, Washington. Zimmerman came off the DL on July 28th. Hit a couple home runs since then. Average at 242. Since coming off, changeups in there for a strike. Zimmerman's one of those guys that's very streaky, and part of the reason, Jeff, I would imagine, he's got a lot of moving parts. Well, he and he holds his bat so high that's a long way to travel when it's coming from up way above his head. See how high his hands are, and he's kind of got that top wrist cocked forward. When you're going well, everything's moving together. It's 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 a beautiful swing. But then when you get into one of those funks and you're like, oh boy, is my foot down in time? Where are my hands? Balls by you and you're just swinging and, and feel like you have no rhythm at all. Here's the 3 1 pitch to Zimmerman. That had good cut action to it. Nationals are good front runners. They're 40 and 16 when they score first this year. Matt Williams. Payoff pitch. And he misses with the changeup away. So Zimmerman walks. That's the first walk in a couple games allowed by De La Rosa. Jason Worth coming up next. So the Nationals are 56 and 51, just a game behind the Mets in the National League East. That seems like it's destined to go to the wire, but their three big cogs in the middle of the order have not hit this year. See what they did a year ago. And as you mentioned earlier, Huey, Desmond's the top dog. He's hitting 217. And he's in the final year of his contract, so is that weighing on his mind? It possibly. Jason Worth has missed a bunch of time with a with a wrist injury after getting a hit on the wrist, so that affects your swing. We talked about Zimmerman and his foot. When you don't have a solid base, it's hard to hit. I mean, so there's some reasons why. Yet you're still saying these guys are too good to be hitting 193 and 217 and 213, yeah. respectively. Yep. I, I suppose the good news is that from Washington Nationals perspective. You got to figure they're going to pick it up in just a couple months to go, and they're still five games above 500. And just a game and a half back in the National League East, three in the wild card. One once fouled off, one and two. 
Worth had some terrific years in Philadelphia and earned that enormous deal here in Washington, but he has battled some injuries in D.C. He did have a day the other day, a Chia, Chia Pet day for, for Jason Worth. They gave a bobblehead away that was a Chia Pet for his beard. Really? Yes. Sorry, we missed that. <laughs> This has popped up foul ground and around Ian Desmond. <laughs> Dick Conley had to uh, find the baseball and he did. That'll end the inning. A run, an unearned run. One nothing, Washington. Over the Colorado Rockies. Do up this inning, LeMayhew, then Ben Paulson, and Nick Hunley. For Ben Paulson, it's been the consistent playing time that's really made a big difference with his numbers over the last 11 games. He knows he's the starter at first base. He's hitting 386 over that time. That includes four doubles, three home runs, and 12 RBI. This dates back to July 26 when he had a multi home run game against Cincinnati. He's also had some big clutch moments in the last week, week and a half. So when you think about playing every day for him, it's not a coincidence that his swing has gotten better, but he also has been doing some work in the cage with the hitting coach. Just trying to, to stay on my backside for, uh, for a while. I, I kept grounding, uh, rolling over balls and grounding out to the second baseman. So, you know, we just started doing some stuff in the cage and just really, really staying on my backside and working on driving the ball the other way. DJ LeMay, who grounding out there for the first out as Ben Paulson comes up. It's that approach and that consistency that's really been helpful for him again over the last about two weeks. He told me it's working with Blake Doyle, getting in that cage and having an approach that's consistent. I think, Huey, you can relate to that. When you finally figure out who you are and your role on a team, that mental break can just help you open up what you're doing physically. Well, and then you just start to take over physically. You're not thinking so much at the plate. You know you're going to be in there, so if you go for four, you're back in there tomorrow. I mean, there's nothing like that for a player. And then, and then on top of that, you're getting another opportunity. Then he's always coming through too. How many times late in the game, seventh, eighth, ninth inning, he's come up with a double, a triple to the off gap like he did the other day to drive in a run or two. We, we were talking to Walt about that in the dugout this afternoon as he uh, fouls his pitch off. And he really has produced a lot of big hits, two in the last series against Seattle, in fact. Well, and that's why he has eight home runs and 34 RBIs in the amount of bats that he has. Zimmerman ahead, 0 and 2. Ball, talk, two strikes. And, and he's talking about staying on his back back leg and that just helps you hit behind the baseball and your head doesn't travel so far forward and it in pitch recognition comes quicker when you do that. And this ball's in the air toward Worth in left field. He's got it. 
two outs. And that'll bring up Nick Conley and other guys developed a really strong relationship with Blake Doyle and it started before Nick officially put on a Rockies uniform. They were in contact after the trade or after a, the signing I should say and Nick really hit it off with Blake and he's been able to drive the ball with authority the other way. And that's why his average you know is way above his career standard coming into this season 303. Let's take a look at our Hyundai League leaders brought to you by your Colorado Hyundai dealers. Batting in the seventh spot, Nick's hitting 328. The only guy who's hitting better is Brandon Crawford, who's had a terrific year, 337. Two catchers and two shortstops in the top five. That's a strike 0 and 2. Chase Headley, after a slow start in New York, has really picked it up. He's having a good year. as a whole leading that National League East this is slowly hit Zimmerman comes off the mound and he throws to Ryan Zimmerman that's all for the Rockies in the second they go quickly and quietly against George Zimmerman dusk in our nation's capital Toyota stores, let's go places. And by Southwest Airlines, book your low fare now at southwest.com. One of the most famous statues in our country, just in, in D.C., raising the flag on Iwo Jima, that company, that Marine company had lost about half its men before they claimed Iwo Jima. World War II. Ian Desmond in the bottom of the second inning with the Nationals ahead 1 0. Desmond a home run and a double yesterday. And snapped a 5 for 35 slide for Ian. He got the day off the day before trying to somehow snap him out of that slide that he was in. This guy was a silver slugger in 2012, 2013, and 2014. In the years he didn't win it over the last five, Troy won it. Tulowitzki. Here's the 0 1 on Desmond. And he fouls it off. He is very similar in size to, to Tulowitzki. He's in phenomenal shape, takes great care of himself. I'll tell you something that, that people here in D.C. know about him. We don't see Washington as much because they're in the East and we're obviously out in the West, but Ian Desmond's one of the uh, top leaders 
Well, he's had a, a tough year, but this is a, a professional guy in every way, shape, or form. Um, clubhouse leader. Clubhouse leader. I mean, he is an A-plus guy. He's the only player in the major leagues in each of the last three seasons has been a 20-20 guy. So that tells you what kind of athlete he is. De La Rosa ahead 0 2 on Desmond. And this is in the air to Cargo and right. And with one out, that'll bring up Wilson Ramos. With every challenge called, the Subaru Eyesight Review will determine the outcome. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. There's Walt. He and Matt Williams go way back. Go back to that 89 World Series when it was the Bay Area Series, obviously interrupted by the tragic earthquake. And they share something else in common other than competing against each other in that 89 World Series. They both hit home runs in that series. And neither one had a particularly great offensive no. series statistically, but both hit home runs. And now you'd expect it from Matt Williams, Matt Williams. probably not as much from Walt. Yeah, I've, I've told the story of Matt before when I was with the Brewers. We were playing the Cleveland Indians. Matt hit three home runs in the ball game, and the other two were caught at the fence. He almost hit five? He almost hit five in Old County Stadium. That would be a good it day. It was the most impressive thing I had seen. One was to left center, one was to dead center, another one was to right center. The thing I always remember about Matt Williams, in addition to being a terrific hitter, is I thought he was George the Animal Steel <laughs> fighting the turnbuckle. He would always, he'd always he'd be licking his, his jersey to remind him to keep his chin on his shoulder. <laughs> fighting the turnbuckle. <laughs> We haven't worked George the Animal no, Steel into a broadcast in a while. 0 oh, and 2 on Ramos. Sliders down in the dirt. 1 and 2. But that was just a, to remind him to keep that shoulder in. Don't let it fly open. Ramos yesterday, 2 for 5, drove in a couple of runs. He's another bat they'd like to see get going. Just 10 for his last 67. He's the 1 2. And a strikeout for De La Rosa. That's number one on the evening for Jorge. That'll bring up Michael Taylor, one of the top prospects, not only in the Nationals organization, but one of the top prospects in baseball entering the season. Here's that uh, change. That split change. Sometimes it'll act like a slider where it'll go more across and down. Other times it'll just have the straight downward bite. That one was a cross. It looked like a slider to Wilson Ramos. Where's that pitch? Oh, no, it looked pretty good to me. 1 0 on Taylor. He's got some pop. He's hit 10 home runs. He's driven in 46. But we weren't wrong. That caught the four strike zone. That's why we thought it looked like a strike. Another change up. Swung out a miss. 1 and 1. He's their leading base stealer. 13 for 16 with stolen bases. Not much of a stolen base team for the Nats. They only have 40 as a club. That's in there, one and two. They got a lot of big bats if everybody's going well, where they can sit back and slug a little bit. As I mentioned, they're fourth in the National League in home runs. Dodgers are the leader in that category. Okay, there's a guy that sets a table for him. He's hitting over 300 that they hope to get back soon. He's been battling back issues. Denard Spann, but Denard's taking BP, taking fly balls in the outfield, trying to get his conditioning up to speed. Two and two with two outs. Good pitch from De La Rosa. Michael was telling me he learned the game from his dad, but he kind of chuckled. He said his dad played college basketball. He said, so he did the best he could. <laughs> he, wanted me, he wanted me to play all different sports, and, and you know, he was a dad. But Good for his dad yeah. to say, yeah, 
Nothing, nothing wrong with playing different sports. Yeah. And baseball became uh, clear cut number one for Mike. He played a little bit of high school basketball. But that's what John Smoltz was talking about in his Hall of Fame induction speech. It's okay. You don't need to specialize so early. Get some cross training in. There you go. And this is a slow roller up the line. Nolan barehand cut it out. How do you like that play? They haven't seen a lot of him in D.C. Now you have. What a play by Arenado against a guy who can fly. Who needs a glove? Guy, huh? Nice. He, was, he was fun to be around. Yeah. He, he, married, he, he married over his head, by the way. Yeah, we won't go there, but <laughs> he, he did. But I'm talking about his stolen bases. What, how about him? He could get a lead and then just take off and be running top speed in, in one step. Yeah, he, was, he was a hero of the 2005 World Series for the White Sox. Kyle Parker leading things off. And that's in there for a strike. Two and one on Kyle. Hit his first career home run during the Rockies brief three game homestand against Seattle Rockies coming off a 7 5 winning 11 innings Rockies trying to do something unfortunately they have not done since July 9th through 12th that's win consecutive games they won four straight July 9th through 12th have not won two in a row since three and two on Parker. What playing time you get, Kyle's talked about this. The more comfortable you'll get, and, and it'll give the Rockies organization, Wall, folks upstairs, a you know a more clear read on you know, who Kyle is as a big leaguer. One out, De La Rosa coming up. What a play I'm again by Nolan to end that second inning. Yeah, because he's charging, thinking he's going to be able to glove this. And make a transfer. Instead, he says, No, I can't because of the hop and the way it went. I've got to barehand it over by the bag, make a strong throw across my body, 
on the money to first base. I mean, we're kind of used to seeing that, but that was not an easy play the way it came off the bat. Neither was a little backhand. Or I, you and I were talking to, uh, to our good friends Bobby Carpenter, F.P. Santangelo on the Nationals television side before the game. And Nolan always comes up when we compare notes. And they give us information, the, uh, the opposing broadcasters, vice versa. We were talking about Nolan, and we, and we always say the same thing. He's a freak show. He does so many things now that you just take for granted. And FP, I ran over there after that play, and FP said, I said, oh, my goodness, four times on the air. <laughs> well, FP it was one of those super utility guys, so he knows. He's played some infield. He's played some outfield. He knows how hard those plays are. But Nolan does it different than other guys because he makes hard plays look easy. Again, you take them for granted. I think if you saw it for the first time, even that little backhand play, you say, wow, that's a terrific play. It was a really good it play. Was. But for him, it's routine. A whole home. Yep. Two outs, Charlie Blackman coming up. Rockies have one hit. That was an Arenado single with two outs in the first. Charlie hit a fly ball to center field beginning the ball game. No leadoff hitter in the National League has driven in more runs or produced more extra base hits than Charlie Blackman. You know, Zimmerman reminds me of a little bit the way he's working tonight. And obviously, Zimmerman has a lot more experience. Than this guy, or actually, I was, I was going to say Taiwan Walker, but I'm going to go back even to Lance Lynn. Lance Lynn throws his fastball about 85 percent of the time. Zimmerman's kind of in the mid 60s with his fastball, but so far tonight, it's been heater after heater. We've seen maybe two or three sliders. I might get one here, big curveball over the top. But that's where a veteran pitcher, somebody like a Zimmerman, who since 2012 has gone 45 and 22, which is the fifth best winning percentage in the National League, where he says, if I've got something that's working, I'm going to go with it and keep going to it. That's pulled down the line. What a pickup by Ryan Zimmerman. And that'll end the inning. So the Rockies go in order again. Seven straight retired by Jordan Zimmerman. He gets a little help from Ryan there. See, tonight would be perfect, Huey. Get out on the boat right now, not very humid. Cruise around the Anacostia. 
Here's Jordan Zimmerman, and the first pitch is a fastball at 89. Strike one from Jorge De La Rosa. The run for the Nationals came in the first inning. It was an unearned run. A double by Espinosa into the left field corner was not fielded cleanly by Parker. And so Espinosa went to third, and then scored on a ground out by Bryce Harper. Jordan Zimmerman looks disgusted with himself. Oh, and two. How can I swing at that? <laughs> Bad golf shots and bad baseball swings will make you talk to yourself. Curveball, uh oh, this is going to be a base hit. Even the wizardry of Nolan Arenado couldn't prevent that. Let's go to Mark Stout and Spilly in our studios in Denver, guys. Yeah, there. You know what? There, there was a degenerate section that Spilly was captain of. Is that correct? Well, he was kind of all over the place. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, he just I mean, still. he didn't sit still. He's like a, you know, one of those things. It's he's here and then he's there. Still have to corral him when he comes on the plane. Spilly, you have to sit with us now. That's right. He's, he's got to sit <laughs> with the broadcasters. He's taking a step backwards. 1 and 0 on Yunel Escobar with Jordan Zimmerman aboard. This isn't hit particularly hard. There's one and on the first double play. I didn't know off the bat, Huey, if it was hit hard enough to double up Escobar, but LeMayhew on that turn did it comfortably. Two outs. And give some credit to Jose Reyes for coming and charging and getting this ball. If he sits back and waits for it, that extra hop and doesn't have the momentum going forward, then no, they don't get Escobar. But see where he ends up throwing that ball. DJ is allowed to catch it, come across the bag. That'll cut down some time and get the strong throw off. So for two guys that haven't worked very long together, they had some pretty nice chemistry. Helps that they're both really gifted too. <laughs> that that does help. Yep. Espinosa takes ball one, fastball at 91, just inside. Danny in 18 career games has hit just 188 against the Rockies. The switch hitter takes inside again. Espinosa is hitting a solid 274 right-handed this year, but. Not much damage. Two home runs, four driven in. Other eight home runs, ten total that have come from the left side. That's what his his downfall for a while because he had that shoulder problem and couldn't really swing the bat from that side of the plate. This ball's lined to right. Cargo's got it, and that's all for the Nationals. We move to the fourth inning. Still one nothing, Washington.
use hashtag RMDataStrong fan, and you might see yourself in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you each night by T Mobile. Rockies will have Jose Reyes in the fourth inning to lead things off. Jose bounced to second his first time up. Arenado and Cargo to follow. One hit, that's it against Jordan Zimmerman in the first three innings. Arenado had a base hit. Line drive to left in inning number one. How about this? Rockies are 11 and 7 against the East this year. And they have a team ERA, Huey, of 326 in those 18 ball games. Now, we're going to show you a graphic here in a moment to show you how significant that is. All time, the lowest ERA the Rockies have ever had in a, in a season against one division, if this were to hold up over the next couple of months, would be the 326 they have against the East in 2015. And coming into the game, that's 58 earned runs in 160 innings. And that just kind of tells you even a, a bigger picture of what they've done and how they've done it. And you mentioned 11 to 7 against the NL East this year. That's including five straight wins. It's in there two and one. So the Rockies are four games above 500 against the East. They've played well against the Central, but not so much when it comes to inside their own division. And obviously one of the things that's just killed them this year is how poorly they've done against the American League. Three and 14. You know, when you think about the Central, and I know the Rockies haven't played the Pirates yet, but you got the Cardinals there. The Rockies went three and four against St. Louis. You got the Cubs. You know, three teams at the top that all could be in the postseason. This is on the ground a second. And the Rockies facing the Nationals for the first time. Understand that they haven't faced the Mets yet. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Let's go right back to Mark Stout and Ryan Spillboards, guys. Well, Nick Swisher was part of a pretty significant deal earlier today as well. Going to Atlanta, Chris Johnson to Cleveland. And one final thing, but if you decide to pull a player back and you say, well, we don't want to trade him, and he cannot be traded then the rest of that year. Right. So, I mean, you put him out on waivers, they decide, oh, they couldn't work out a deal, you pull him back, well, you couldn't trade him then after that. Inside one and one on Cargo. Cargo swung through a 3 2 fastball his first time up. Last 24 games hitting 402. Twelve home runs, 28 driven in during those 24 ball games. A rocket of a home run off the back wall of the visitors' bullpen on Wednesday against Walker. And it's three and one. All fastballs out at 95. Velocity tonight from Jordan Zimmerman than what he has been throwing. That's a base hit to right, so the Rockies have their second hit. Went down and got that slider. <laughs> Not going to shift you. Put the second baseman pretty deep, but it's all the slider spin, the red dot on the baseball. Just powered it through. It wouldn't matter if the shift was on. I think that would have been a base hit anyway. 
Ryan Zimmerman, Carlos Gonzalez <laughs> visiting. And DJ swings at the first pitch, hits as well to center field, but Michael Taylor will have room to stride in front of the warning track, and that ends the frame for the Rockies. So cargo reaches, that's it. One nothing at Nationals middle of four. Go to the bottom of the fourth inning with Jeff Houston and Jenny Kavnar. I'm Drew Goodman. Bryce Harper is going to lead things off. It's time for our Lowe's Never Stop Improving stat. Well, the MVP of candidates in the National League. Arizona was just in for four games. They split that series with the Nationals. Paul Goldschmidt, what he's done this year and what Bryce Harper's done. Batting average very close. Home runs seven plus for uh, Bryce Harper. Nine more ribbies for Goldschmidt, and uh, the runs are pretty similar. Harper's first time up, hit a ground ball to the right side to produce a run. And they say he went around there, so it's 0-1 on Harper. He will not turn 23 until October. Here's the 1 from De La Rosa. Big curveball. We break that out once in a while. And I'd like to see him throw it a few more times in a game. Maybe a get me over curveball to start in at bat because it is a dandy. I mean, that's a big bender. I don't care if you know if it's coming, it's still hard to hit. do you think a few years ago he used it more, Jeff? Yes, he did. But now he's really has found that release point on the split. And that is a great piece of hitting. By Bryce Harper. And that's the difference from even a year ago to now for Bryce Harper. Why he's hitting over 3 330. Because he just blocked that off to left field. It wasn't a, a major swing. He just said, hey, I'm going to just force it over there. Remember the other night we were talking about, and you watch this pitch again, we were talking about John Gray. And one of the things they were working on with John Gray is how to work his fastball. Outside the zone, throw quality balls, if you will. And and I'm sure Jorge right now would tell you, I missed inside the strike zone. I had no intent of hitting the outside corner. I wanted to make it look like a strike, but take it off the plate. And he didn't do that. And that's why Bryce Harper was able to get enough of the barrel on that ball to hit at the opposite field. But you can see he didn't even finish his swing. That was about a three-quarter swing. It's like a volley in tennis. Right. You're trying to go back down the line. You just kind of block it yeah. down the line. Now Harper can run a little bit. He hasn't looked to as much as his first couple of years. He's a very aggressive base runner, period. He'll take the extra bag. He'll go hard into bases. One ball, one strike. Ryan Zimmerman walked his first time up.
certainly a double play candidate if De La Rosa can get a ground ball. Career 342 hitter against the Rockies. A lot of first round draft picks on this club. Well, he was the first round. In 2005 when they pick came once, the Nash. Right. Once they left Montreal. Ian Desmond has the longest tenure with the club. He was actually selected back when they were the Expos, your old club. Two on, drive toward right center field, and it's going to split the gap. Harper is going to get a green light and no throw. DJ couldn't come up with the relay throw. It's 2 0. Zimmerman with his 40th RBI. You see 16 double for Ryan Zimmerman. The speed of Bryce Harper. Takes him all the way from first to third, and then that was a split finger that stayed up in the zone. Zimmerman splits the gap between Cargo and Charlie. Looking over his shoulder, he was he was being waved the whole way. And even if DJ comes up with it, he's, it's going to be a close play at home, even if you would even throw it. Jason Wood pops it up. And Nolan makes the catch. One out. Well, you can schedule a group outing at Coors Field. Get discounts and scoreboard recognition when you bring your group of 25 or more. Well, 303 Rockies or go online to rockies.com slash groups for more information. So that'll bring up the aforementioned Ian Desmond. He had a fly ball to right in the second inning. Strikeouts this year have been an issue for Desmond. He has struck out basically a third of the time. As like I said earlier, he's going to be a free agent at the end of the year. And was it last year or last offseason he turned down a reported $107 million deal? And they've got a kid now that they got in a trade from San Diego that's tearing it up a shortstop at Triple A. Which may indicate that they're going to let you know Desmond go. We'll see. He still I know he hasn't had the kind of year that is typical of Ian Desmond. But you're talking about a front line shortstop who can hit. He's still with power. He's still going to command a, a pretty penny on the open market. Somewhere probably in a four or five year range. 2 0. And that's a comeback with De La Rosa. Hangs on to it. Two outs. Let's go back to our Denver studios. Here's Mark and Ryan again. You know we call that Spilly lazy. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Another tough play for Nolan, but well, it's not tough for Nolan. No. Wilson Ramos. He's made two plays with his glove and two plays with his bare hand tonight. In the inning, a double by Zimmerman makes it two nothing as we go to the fifth.
Ford Escape, smart, safe, and fun to drive. Ford Escape, go further. By Southwest Airlines, book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Well, last time we were in town, the Washington Monument was undergoing a facelift. You see the Jefferson Memorial in the background. Right now it is the rotunda on the Capitol that is undergoing a facelift. There's a lot of cranes. In between us and the Capitol. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Just looking out. Ben Paulson in the fifth inning will lead it off. Ben hit a fly ball to left field. It's Paulson, Hunley, and Parker against Zimmerman. And Zimmerman's curveball is fouled off. Well, some big names in the Rockies farm system all going tonight. Kyle Freeland will go later on tonight for Modesto. But right now, Jeff Hoffman, who is just acquired from Toronto, part of the Tulowitzki deal, making his second start. In double A and New Britain's leading one nothing against the Reading fighting Phils in the fourth inning and so far Hoffman three and a third he's allowed one hit no runs a couple walks three strikeouts so he's got a nice ball game going this ball's pulled to first and it comes up with it one out it's a second nice play seen from Zimmerman over at first base. Who wants tacos when the Rockies score seven or more in any game? Go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day. Do it between four and six to get your Rockies taco special. La Paz at Taco Bell. See the cranes? That's what Jeff was referring to out there was one, two, three, four. And then you can see that the tallest building naturally in D.C. Nothing can be built taller than the Capitol. And the Rotunda is undergoing a facelift. You can't really see it, but there's scaffolding all over the place. Just down Pennsylvania Avenue from the hotel. And Nick foul tip on that. It's 0 and 2. Jesus Tinoco tonight against West Virginia. In the Sally League, three and a third, no runs, just three hits, no walks, couple strikeouts. He has struck out, is it nine or 11 without a walk so far in his first two appearances for the Rockies in the Rockies organization? Another guy who came from Toronto in the Tulowitzki. Yeah, game. another hard thrower. It's and it's good to see that somebody that's down there playing in the in the lower levels is not not walking anymore. No, and Tinoco, Huey, will run his fastball. And he work 90 92 but he can run it up to 96 miles an hour I like the variance yep reach back for a little bit more Jordan Zimmerman just reached back for a little more just 66 pitches now here in the top of the fifth inning with a couple couple outs now and that was his fourth strikeout as he got Hundley Kyle Parker struck out his first time two outs nobody on and boy he's got a lot of life on that fastball this is more the fastball that we've seen in years past for Jordan Zimmerman in his last couple of outings he felt like his fastball was kind of flat even though the velocity was the same there wasn't as pitching coaches will say or hitters like yourself there wasn't good finish to it yeah late life where it's you'd say well I, I saw that good but then you take a bad swing for Jordan Zimmerman tonight it looks like he's following through more and kind of throwing through the target talking to some of the scouts who say they thought he was pulling off more and just leaving the ball flat to the, the hitter when you fall off to the side the ball comes out it's easier to pick up when you're standing in the box Steve McCaddy the pitching coach for the Washington National now one thing that is true for all of these starters in the Nationals rotation they pound the zone they lead baseball in first strike percentage and they have produced the fewest walks per nine innings so you have to beat them with the bat they are not going to create traffic for you well, the 71 pitches he's thrown he's thrown 49 strikes only 22 balls I mean that just tells you and when you're constantly working ahead that makes you feel like man I got to jump on this first pitch as a, as a hitter because I don't want to fall behind 
it makes hitting that much more difficult. And then you get a couple guys like Strasburg. Tomorrow has just had a shot of, of Zimmerman, or excuse me, I said that twice now. Scherzer, <laughs> Max Scherzer on Sunday. You're getting their big three. You're getting Jordan Zimmerman. You're getting now Strasburg coming off the DL tomorrow, and then that guy. Parker leans on this one a little bit. High fly ball to left, but he missed it by a grain. And the catch is made out there by Jason Wood. So it's another one, two, three inning in the fifth for Jordan Zimmerman. Two nothing Nationals. Yesterday, the Rockies had an off day. They got to play tourist in our nation's capital. And today, some of the Rockies were able to visit some wounded warriors. It was a very special morning indeed for these players because they got the chance to go to the Walter Reed Hospital and sit and visit with military men that were hurt, injured, most of them missing a limb. It was a very humble experience all in all. And more than ever, it, for Darren Holmes, he said having a military background, it really caused uh, his heart strings to pull. To be honest with you, I was excited about coming, but at the same time dreading coming just because of uh, it affects me personally, you know, it affects me uh, uh, emotionally. And um, uh, to sit with a mom whose son's lost both of his arms, you know, and knowing that she's probably going to take care of that kid the rest of her life, and uh, uh, it's, it's humbling. It's humbling. But it was, uh, it was a great opportunity, and I, I would I'd definitely come back uh, anytime they ask me. Well, we heard a lot of stories today at the Walter Reed Military Hospital, and of course, a lot of these guys in the rehab process, it was really fascinating to watch just how intense they are and still the competitive spirit within each and every one of them. I think Nick Hunley summed it up best that, you know, if my arms soar after a game, I have nothing to complain about. I watched how hard those guys work today, and that was inspiring indeed. But going back to Darren Holmes, I just thought it was so neat. A lot of the military personnel wanted to take pictures with the Rockies, and Darren Holmes kept taking his camera up to guys and saying, would you mind? if I got my picture with you he was so excited and honored to be there and he even got to talk to one gentleman who just came back from the wounded warriors game and had several medals from from different events that he competed in and his eyes just lit up he spent so much time with those guys and really just walking away it's hard not to be touched by that experience it's hard not to be touched and I know those veterans who've given so much and have had some indescribable injuries they raise the spirits of those that go and meet with them. Yes, they do. I mean, and then it kind of gives you a little dose of reality Absolutely. as a player because you get wrapped up in your baseball bubble and your stats and, and everything that's going on. And then you go into see something like that and you realize how fortunate and how lucky and blessed you are to be able to play this wonderful game of baseball. Yeah, well put, Jeff. That is fouled off by Michael A. Taylor. Likes 
his middle initial being used. Why not? Yeah. You'll appreciate this because you did this. You, now you went to college, but you finished your degree. We've told the story before. Yes. Once your big league career uh, was over, Michael was drafted out of state of Florida in high school, but he is currently going to school Oof. in the off season to earn his college degree. That takes some dedication. Because at least when I went back, I only had five hours or, f or 15 hours, excuse me, to finish up. It's not like I had 120 or 130 hours to try to work through. We chatted a little bit today. He's a really nice young man. Got a lot of ability, converted shortstop, become an outfielder. He runs exceptionally well. That's why that play that Nolan made on him to rob him with the bare hand was. Oh no, he's gonna have another opportunity this time with the glove. Makes it that much more special because of the way that kid runs. One out, and we go to our Root Sports Studios. Here's Mark and uh, Scully once again. Turk Wendell and having to eat the black licorice and then brush his teeth in between innings. I mean, isn't that a little um, off the wall? <laughs> we, we, we saw him in LA. He was. You know, fellas, I don't know if you remember this, because Spilly, you're you're too young. You didn't play when Spilly played, and you know there weren't as many games televised at that point in time. But Spill, uh, Spilly, Huey used to have to floss between at bats. So I mean, if yeah, you know, if if you had a good AB, you flossed, and if you had a bad AB, you flossed <laughs> you twice. harder. Right? <laughs> It was kind of a takeoff of the Turk then, right? That's right. I had to do something to get some of that uh, bad taste out of my mouth. <laughs> Thanks. Ask Helton uh, about Helton that. Did Helton that. did that once. He started the day in a full beard, and, and he, he slowly shaved it off as he went 0 for 4, I think. De La Rosa I, has that out. Billy's right. They're not... They're not rituals, they're routines. Spoken what? like a true exactly. former baseball player. And that's the way it goes. It's, it's, not, it's not bad if they work. Isn't there a commercial about that? No, but you saved a lot of money on dental <laughs> bills with that flossing. Who, what, did somebody use to floss us? Seriously. Yes, I, I don't remember who it was, but there, there are so UL many things. Washington you know had what? a toothpick way you, back yeah, in the day. Yeah, UL Washington. Yep. For the for the Royals, and there's some other things that we cannot mention on air because it is a uh, family show uh, with players and their superstition. Yes, you know Escobar with two outs. He's 0 for two. Two runs allowed by De La Rosa, only one of which is earned. It's obviously been overshadowed a little bit by. What Jordan Zimmerman has done, but you know, Dale has pitched a very solid game so far. Well, even that last inning where he gave up the one run, you know, he had a gave up the double to Zimmerman to drive in Harper, but there's a runner at second base and nobody out, and he leaves him stranded there. Yep, got Worth on a pop up, Desmond on a comebacker, and then Wilson Ramos on a ground ball to third. Two and zero on Escobar, leading the Nationals with that 3.14 average. Three and zero. Nell has the best fielding percentage of any third baseman in the league. Here's the 3-0 on Unell. That's on the outside corner. His 314 average also is the highest among any third baseman. Well, they had to give up a lot to get him in Tyler Clipper. 
little bit generous on that four strike zone with the three zero pitch. Sometimes uh, it's referred to as the automatic, the automatic the one. The automatic strike. That one. And Jorge will take it. And that's three and two. Escobar doesn't like it. You can tell. He's trying not to show up Jeff Kellogg, but he thought both those pitches, and honestly, they were away. Should be a runner at first base, but now it's a three two count. So you, got, you have to go out there again. If he's called the two out there, no sense. That or you can bust him in because Escobar's kind of thinking. Diving over the plate. Yeah, exactly. Three and two. They want it in. It is in, and it's fouled off. Cut it. Which bothered you more, Huey? East and west, or north and south? East and west, because I can't cover that with the length of my bat. But if it's if north and south, I can get on top of a baseball, or I can hit one that's down in the zone, even if it's below the knees. But I can't cover both sides of the plate. Jorge wants to throw the split three two and it's hit the third boy Nolan's been busy. And it's a one two three fifth inning on to the sixth we go Rockies have to figure out Jordan Zimmerman they trail two nothing at Nationals Park. Two nothing Washington Bryce Harper and RBI ground out also a single and he scored a double by Ryan Zimmerman Jordan Zimmerman's been almost untouchable and Jorge De La Rosa as we said a moment ago has pitched well but Jordan Zimmerman a little bit better tonight it'll be Jorge leading things off in the sixth inning and then the top of the order Blackman and Reyes. National started the day. A game back of the Mets. Mets have won six straight. There's a strike on the inside corner, including he started out that run with a three game sweep at City Field of the Nationals. They're currently looting, losing one to nothing to Tampa Bay down in Tampa tonight. They play six more games against one another. Mets lead the season series seven games to six. 0 2. Breaking balls outside. One and two. I guarantee you, and when those two teams match up, Washington and New York, there's not many guys racing to that bat rack with, no. with the arms that are going to be thrown up to that plate. You know, you think of, uh, and we'll get into this in New York, you think of John Neese. Jonathan Neese is the fifth starter for the Mets, but he's on some kind of roll now also. Yeah, and the Rockies are going to get him on Monday, Harvey on Tuesday, who's been pitching well. Five straight starts of over seven innings in each start. Yeah, this is, this is the trip from you know where when you've got to go. Zimmerman Strasburg Scherzer 
And then the forearms that we're talking about in New York. But Walt was talking about that as well before the game. And he said, I love how my guys compete. And they do. And it was it was on display Wednesday night. They came from behind twice, finally tied Seattle 5-5 in the ninth and won at 7-5 and 11. It was a check swing, so it's two and two. Check swing, walk across the plate. Not the prettiest check no. swing we've ever seen. Well, it's three There's and two. A battle going on. Yeah, Zimmerman did fly open on that pitch. Let's see if De La Rosa can win the battle. Strike at number five for Jordan Zimmerman, and that'll bring up Charlie. NL East breakdown. The Mets are 58-50, and, and the Nationals, I should say, are a game and a half back at 56-51. Nationals have not played as well since July 5th, but the Mets are seven games above 500. Well, as it sits now, Pittsburgh and Chicago have the two wild card spots. San Francisco's a half game back, and then Washington's three back. Curveball and a good one for a strike. And I suppose it's fitting that they'll play each other the final weekend of the season. That's the way it's supposed to be, right? That's right. And those last three games are in New York. This ball in the air to Harper and right. Charlie looks like he's limping. A Let's little see bit. What happens on this swing? It was a high fastball he tried to get on top of. Did his foot roll over? Yeah. Yeah, his left ankle. He rolled over the top. Oh, Joe. A lot of times if you if you're able to unweight pretty quickly, it scares you, but you can walk it off. I think like it, on the basketball yeah. court, you've done it, I've done it. Where you've got that momentary ow that really hurt, then you have a chance to walk it off, and then it, you're fine. He feels better, yeah. yeah. Charlie kind of, I don't want to say waved off Keith Duggar, but he it looked like he said, No, I'm okay. One ball, one strike on Reyes. Yeah, that's a good pitch. One and two. He's throwing that. Breaking ball a lot more here, second and third time through the lineup. It was almost a complete diet of fastballs early in this game. Yeah, the one two has popped up middle of the diamond. Desmond calling for it. He's got it. And once again, Jordan Zimmerman makes quick work of the Rockies. He's retired seven straight. Second time he's done that in the game. Two nothing.
of 11th inning in a 5-5 game on Wednesday and Mike McHenry with the walk off two run home run off Michael Guaype and the Rockies could celebrate. Bottom of the sixth inning in Washington. Drew Goodman, Jeff Houston, and Jenny Kavnar. It'll be two, three, and four for the Nationals. Danny Espinosa, Bryce Harper, Ryan Zimmerman, De La Rosa has allowed four hits. The 74th pitch, a curveball misses. De La Rosa is doing his job. Just uh, one of those runs is earned. But it's just Jordan Zimmerman and doing kind of what he's done to the Rockies his whole career. 5 and 0 with a 2.20 ERA coming in. Espinosa has played all four infield positions for the Nationals this year. Way on one and two. And one of those Long Beach State guys, Danny Espinosa. That's unusual for De La Rosa in that he's always been so good at Coors Field, as we all know. But this year, really high ERA and out on the road, a 302 ERA. Last year, he had a 509 ERA out on the road. This year, five and two. On the road, two and two at Coors. So one of the differences, at least the last month and a half, is the walks are way down. That's a pretty good pitch, but it's going to be an impossible play for LeMay here. He's got to turn the dugout and smile. He hit that ball 70 feet off his knuckles, but it goes as an infield hit. Fan Friday continues back at our Denver studios. Mark. Yeah, Kaz Matsui would always have a bat in his backpack like he was a 16 year old kid <laughs> going to a tournament on the weekend. Okay, Spilly, tell me you've never once just had the bat at home and, and just say, oh, man, I need to pick it up because my swing's not right. Hey, <laughs> we're true. <laughs> Now let me ask you this, Billy. Over there, did a lot of the Far Eastern players have the bat, you know, at the hotel, and and like James Dean, a cigarette coming out of the corner of their mouth while they were taking practice swings? Little different. Harper with a 2-0 count. And De La Rosa checks on Espinosa. Harper lined an 0-2 pitch to left field in the fourth, leading off and scored on a Zimmerman double to right center field. It's the only earned run against De La Rosa tonight. And now it's three and out. De La Rosa knows he's going to have the green light here. You to be careful, but you don't want to create traffic. Well, the other number that he knows too is Bryce Harper, the third time he's he going to face a pitcher in a game. He's hitting 429. 
That's a clown average. <laughs> Goes off speed 3 and 0. Oh, it's 3 and 1. In reference to the clown question. Yeah, well. <laughs> sorry, you hit 429 <laughs> and you're in the big leagues. As a 22 year As old. 22 year old. It has uh, over three years of major league service time now. And ball four. So now De La Rosa has to deal with runners at first and second. Nobody out. Ryan Zimmerman, who's walked and doubled in the game, approaching the plate. Fans, this is an important one. The Rockies and the Baseball Tomorrow Fund will be holding their annual baseball equipment drive prior to the game on August 15th against the Padres. New and used equipment can be dropped off at all gates. Proceeds benefit the baseball programs at Denver Public Schools. So equipment drive Saturday, August 15th. You know, there's some stuff laying around in my garage that I'll be bringing that day. So take a peek and bring some out to help Denver Public Schools. So Ryan Zimmerman <laughs> at the plate. He's driven in 54 and 62 games against the Rockies. 342 lifetime average. He's another one of those Chesapeake, Virginia guys. He's kind of at the head of all those. Folks coming over with Michael Kadire, obviously. Upton. Michael was first, and then David Wright, and then the Upton brothers. Eddie Butler goes tomorrow's from that part of the world. Scott Oberg up for the Rockies. He said Eddie Butler, he said, wait a second, wasn't he supposed to throw on Sunday? But they, with the day off, they moved him up to Saturday, pushed Johan Flande back to Sunday after working in, in relief. On Wednesday. Yes, he went. And the green with you is Brian Odora at first. Thank you, Brian. I was just uh, also looking at the reaction of Brian Zimmerman. He knew he shouldn't have swung with that little hop back. I see a check swing from a big, strong guy like Ryan Zimmerman. I think that's when Jim Rice, a couple times in his career, snapped, snapped off a the bat, bat. Right. stopping it on a check swing. He called time. Right? I'm he's not sure. Zimmerman. That helped out the Rockies because Jorge was going to the plate. And DJ, DJ was still at second. Yeah, DJ was wanting to try to pick off Espinosa. Real quick, DJ flashed the hand and. Yeah, I don't know who called timeout. Must have been Zimmerman. One, two. Murphy's Law. If you wear padding on a leg to avoid hitting a spot with a baseball, it will hit another spot. Well, and, and when you have. A bad foot anyway with that planter fascia fascia it's just gonna say okay I'm gonna hit that <laughs> instead of <laughs> the guard whatever will make you feel the worst Crowd tonight on a Friday at Nationals Park. City's really the last few years got behind the Nats. Last year they won 96 games. 2012 they won 98 games. Two and two. Jay has a chance for an out at first and he'll get Zimmerman there. 
he comes up with that cleanly they're going to turn a double play but that thing was an absolute rocket so it's second and third one out with Jason Worth coming up. Well, not only was it a hard smash, he also has to worry about the umpire. Now, look at where Alan Porter is positioned. Nothing that he's doing wrong, but now DJ has to try to field this ball after it goes in between the legs of Alan Porter. Wow, I didn't see that the first time. That's an amazing play by DJ then. Yeah, just to even knock it down and get an out. Yeah, if, if he catches that clean there, that's an easy double play. It's unusual that the umpire was the best athlete on the, on the field <laughs> to on be a given get play. The, to get the hops yeah. up and get out of the way. It's amazing what you'll do in self-preservation. Infield in, worth at the plate. He's fouled out and popped out. On the swing, it's, no, hey, maybe not. This is worthy of another look to have the cat-like reflexes to knock it down. And then the smarts to go pick it up knowing who is running in Ryan Zimmerman. Cutter fouled off one and one. center to get a run home. Blackman will make the catch. And Danny Espinosa will score the third run for Washington. Bryce Harper moves to third. Jason Worth went down and got this curveball right above his ankle. Drop the barrel of the bat to the baseball. Watch how much this breaks, but then where he hits it. You see Nick trying to drop down because he was expecting it to end up down in the dirt. Two gone, runner at third, Ian Desmond. Desmond, a fly ball to right and a comebacker. Job by Hunley. down here. You can't afford to give up another run. Brad Moore saying yes again on the check swing. I said, you know, three runs, four runs is a tough task to try to come back against Washington with the back end of their bullpen. After picking up Jonathan Papelbon who closes, they got Drew Storm for the eighth inning. So they really try to shorten the game down. This ball line down the left field line. That will get another run home, and Desmond in the second with the double. Back to back games with a double for Desmond. And it is 4 0 Washington. Showing signs of breaking out of the slump. Holds the hands in close to the body. De La Rosa knows. Couldn't afford to give up that extra run. But that was more the flat. Split finger that stayed on the same plane. Wilson Ramos at the plate. And that splitter dives in the dirt.
Two outs in the bottom of the sixth. Four runs, six hits for Washington. The Rockies, no runs, just two hits. They've committed an error. Nationals club last 25 ball games. Huey averaging just three and a half runs a game. After averaging well over four runs a game prior to that. This inning, from a pitch standpoint. I'm sure, this will be all for De La Rosa. This pitch will be number 98, and he's thrown 30 of those 98 in this frame. It's not like the Nationals were hot coming in. They won yesterday 8 to 3 over Arizona to earn a split of that four game series, but they lost five of their previous seven even with that victory. Matt Williams remaining upbeat. He likes his team a lot. Who wouldn't with the pitching staff he has? Feels like he's starting to get some of his main cogs healthy again. And it starts with a couple guys that have RBIs this inning Jason Work and Ian Desmond. Those two guys, and Ryan Zimmerman has an as an RBI earlier in the game. So did Jason Worth, we saw that big pad on his left wrist, or excuse me, his right wrist. No, it was his left wrist. Now that I'm thinking about it, his left wrist from where he was hit by the pitch. But that's what they need for their offense, and it helps tonight. They're getting the. Uh, Jordan Zimmerman of that, old uh, yeah. that finished last year's regular season in game number 162 throwing a no hitter it's against Miami on the ground to short Reyes has got it that'll end the inning two more runs for the Nationals will go to the seventh four nothing Washington. Over the Colorado Rockies and we're headed to the top of the seventh here. I want to compare the two right fielders in this game. Of course we know Carlos Gonzalez for the Rockies a superstar. Bryce Harper also a superstar. Just 22 years old. 
he's kind of dipped off for him after the first 75 games when he hit 25 home runs and a 344 average since July 4th, hitting just, and I'll put that in quotes, 307. As for Cargo, it's really been a tale of two seasons. He's heated up since July 4th, hitting 402, 12 home runs for him in those 24 games. I got the chance to talk to Cargo today a little bit about Bryce Harper. He said he's so much fun to watch. He has so much energy, brings an excitement to this game. And Cargo said he needs to know it's very important who he is to this game. He's one of the new faces of Major League Baseball, along with Trout and Chris Bryant, those young guys. And I said, well, Cargo, what does that make you? He said, it makes me old. I'm 29 years old. I'm so old now. I'm an old guy in this game. Um, but he remembered back when Frank Thomas coined him the phenom when he was younger and playing for the A's. And he said, I didn't really understand what I, I didn't really understand. I didn't understand what he meant at the time. And then looking back, I think he was trying to kind of pass that point along that I was the face of the game at the time as Nolan Arenado stretches out for a double here. Nolan also included in that young group. So it's important, I think, for the veteran guys that are stars in this game to be able to have a hand in passing that baton. Don't you think, Jeff? Very much so, Jenny. It's so key to carrying the tradition of baseball on. Because you got the, eventually you're going to become old and you're going to have to pass the torch to some of the young players. And it is nice to be able to do that. And, and you know what? Baseball is doing a better job. They need to do a better job of marketing their stars. The NBA has done a marvelous job marketing Steph Curry, LeBron James. Now, those guys have done it on the floor. But they they become household names and household faces. Uh, we know the NFL's done a good job with it. Cargo at the plate takes strike one after that double by Arenado. Baseball needs to continue to do it. And the two most likely guys right now clearly are the MVP leading MVP candidates in each league. 22 year old Bryce Harper and Mike Trout who turns 24 today. And who won the MVP of the All Star game? That helps. Ralph's done it twice, but this most recently in Cincinnati. Two strikes on Cargo. With Nolan standing at second base, he is the first Rocky to touch second base tonight. Rockies have had three hits. Nolan has two of them. First leadoff man to reach also tonight. Cargo has the other hit. This is a towering pop up that Ian Desmond's going to call for. Coors Field is available year round for special events, and most areas of the ballpark can be reserved. Call 303 Rockies and book your event at Coors Field. Talk about first pitch efficiency for a pitcher. Well, Jordan Zimmerman is the definition tonight. 17 of 22 first pitch strikes. He hasn't walked anybody. I don't really remember him coming close to walking anybody. I guess De La Rosa had a 3-2 three, three, two count. count. Took him nine pitches. He's only had one other three ball count. DJ has an 11 game hitting streak going against the Nationals, which he's hit 386 with a couple home runs. It's 0 for 2 tonight. That's fouled off, and now he's behind two strikes. Zimmerman. His next delivery will be number 98. Wondering his season high of pitches is 113. Covered that pitch. Seen that a bunch that tonight. Jordan Zimmerman trying to get guys to chase letter high. If you remember, that was one of my scouting reports tonight on Jordan way back in the first inning. That he'll get the elevated fastball. Rivero, the left hander. Casey Jansen, the right hander. Nice backup, strike three. Backup slider. That's six strikeouts for Zimmerman. And there are two outs. Ben Paulson will come up. 
get so concerned with a ball being up or a ball being away from you. DJ thought that was in and just stayed on the inside corner. Paulson brought a 300 average into the ballpark tonight. The rookies at 298 after going 0 for 2. It's still the second best batting average of any rookie in the National League. Matt Duffy's been hitting in the three hole most of the year for the Giants. He's hitting 309. He's he's one of the guys that's not talked about. He's the seemingly a, a great deal nationally but he has had a terrific freshman season one ball one strike on Paulson and there's the group of five Yasmani Tomas so three in the National League West another update from that game in Reading between New Britain and Reading Jeff Hoffman taken out after five innings. Nothing wrong with him. He, he didn't give up a run. He gave up only one hit in his second start for the Rockies. Three walks, five strikeouts. Rockies, listen, he's coming off Tommy John surgery. Young guy. They're going to be cautious Very. with how many pitches he and throws. And rightfully so. Absolutely. But a terrific outing tonight for Jeff Hoffman. He had a very solid first outing with New Britain. And again tonight, no runs, one hit allowed by Jeff Hoffman. And speaking of New Britain, Chad Bettis is going to go on a rehab assignment. Yeah, here's what he's going to do on Tuesday. He's going to be with New Britain and he'll throw a simulated game. And then on Saturday, he will actually pitch any real game. In the Eastern League. Probably and around 65 pitches. And the best news of all, when he was diagnosed with elbow inflammation and it starts red flags and you always fear the worst, well, it's actually been the best case scenario. He kind of backed off for a little more than a week and he felt great today after another bullpen session. So he's thrown two bullpen sessions, Huey, and, and both times came out of it feeling uh, terrific. So that is really good news. You know he's feeling good if they're saying, okay, next Saturday he's going to start pitching in a rehab assignment. Throw that arm strength up. Yeah, three and two on Paulson. It's pulled oh, into the seat careful. Now. I got to ask Ben if he's got any family up. Not all that far from. Atlanta. Short flight. This Rockies will be in Atlanta in a couple weeks. Next road trip. Pittsburgh and Atlanta. 3 2 on Paulson. And that's lined the other way. Good piece of hitting. Around third. Here comes Nolan. And the throw is not going to come close to getting him. And the Rockies are on the board. Ben Paulson makes it a 3 to 1, or excuse me, a 4 to 1 game. And, and an another, RBI number 35. And another RBI late. You don't want to face this guy seventh inning or beyond. So where do you, I mean, you play him because he hooked a uh, curveball that was fouled down the right field line. So they go fastball away and he covers that. And that reminds me of that swing that Bryce Harper took early in the game. Remember when Bryce just blocked it over to right field? Ben did the same thing. And then you know the arm and strength of Jason Worth in left field. You're playing back, you had the lead to go ahead and send him in another RBI for Mr. Paulson. Matt Williams going to pat him on the back, take the baseball. Jordan Zimmerman gone after six and two thirds. He gets a standing ovation and deservedly so from the hometown crowd. He threw 106 pitches. Rockies down by three.
time for our Data Strong fan photo brought to you by T Mobile. This is Shane and Sydney Mahoney enjoying the ball game and a little cotton candy. Got to have cotton candy if you're that age at the ball game. It is a beautiful night in our nation's capital with Jeff Houston and Jenny Kavnar. I'm Drew Goodman. The Rockies trailing four to one in the top of the seventh inning. They just got a run on a base hit by Ben Paulson to drive in Nolan Arenado who began the inning with a double. Nick Hundley coming up. Casey Jansen former closer with Toronto is now in the ball game. Yeah, in 2013 he saved 34 games last year 25 games for Toronto. Very dependable durable guy. Eight major league seasons doesn't walk many player many batters. Good strikeout to walk ratio. And this pitch is lined to center field. Michael Taylor's there. That'll end the inning. So the Rockies get a couple of hits. They get a run as well. It is four to one as we go to the bottom of the seventh at Washington. As we go to the bottom of the seventh inning, Michael A. Taylor is going to lead it off. Scott Oberg is now in the ball game for the Rockies. The day after every Rockies victory, get 50% off your online order at Papa John's. The promo code ROCKSWIN at PapaJohns.com. So Scott Oberg's been busy since his latest recall from AAA Albuquerque. 38 appearances now for Scott. It's been a mixed bag. I mean, when he's been on, he's been pretty good. He has given up a few more home runs than obviously he would like with the nine. That leads uh, uh, most among National League relievers in only 35 innings. He still has that power fastball, big overhand curveball. Drew Storen is warming up. The former closer has now been bumped to the eighth inning with the acquisition of Jonathan Papelbon. So here's young Michael A. Taylor, 24 year old. Breaking ball from Oberg misses. Jesus Tinoco, we were talking about him pitching tonight, Huey, for Asheville. He went five innings and finally gave up a run. He gave up two, in fact. It's five innings, six hits, walked two, struck out three in his second appearance. It's coming from Toronto's organization. Yes, Billy sent me a text, said we jinxed him when we were talking about no walks, and then he ended up walking a guy. What did I fire back? <laughs> We we're talking about superstitions. Superstitions. Excuse me, rituals, rituals at that point in time. That was fouled off. And I said he forgot to brush his teeth between the right. 
that led to the two walks. Absolutely. You ask him next time you see Jesus, you say, did you, did you right. brush your teeth between that fourth and fifth inning? One pitch and a bunt attempt, and it's two and two. Not many guys do that. No, I think D. Gordon, D. Gordon would be the only guy that comes to my mind. D. will do it with two strikes. Michael Taylor, knowing that uh, you're going to pinch hit for the pitcher, he could do that. Dan Ugla standing on the on deck circle. Dan needs to get in the weight room, doesn't he? Still. It's saying it all these years. Another two two look out. Oh. Was pretty, pretty close to the dugout. Here come the white flags. That's where they, that's where it hit right on that door. Chip the paint there. Yes, it did. I don't know if you could pick up what they said. <laughs> Somebody said, you think he was looking for a breaking pitch after he found that fastball over the dugout? <laughs> yeah. I would have to say, yeah, I think he was looking for a breaking pitch. Here's another 2-2. Two -two. And he got him with a fastball at 96. So Obert strikes out Taylor. If you're playing fantasy baseball, well, you need to listen up because MLB.tv serves up real-time highlights and pitch tracking info on your out-of-market fantasy players. Live or on demand on over 400 devices. So Dan Ugla will come up. Dan so many years in Florida and then Atlanta. And then last year... Got moved around a little bit. Actually got 11 at bats with the Giants last year. They're trying to find anybody to play second base last year. Gone through so many players the Giants had. Yeah, Dan Ugg is going to go down in history, Huey, as one of the great Rule 5 selections of all time. He was selected from Arizona back in 2006, which means he had to stay on the roster for the whole year with the Marlins or be returned, offered back. The $25,000 to his original team, that being Arizona. Well, he stuck in 06. He hit 282 with 27 home runs and 90 <laughs> RBIs. Just say thank you. We're, thank you. We're, we're good Pretty with him. Pretty good at $50,000 investment. That was one of the all time 50 grand investments. Terrific Rule 5 selection. And listen, he's always struck out a lot, but he's always mashed the baseball. He's. He had a string of five straight years with 30 home runs or better after the 27 home run season in 26 in, in excuse me in uh, 06. So who would win a forearm competition Dan Ugla or Steve Garvey taking that I'm taking Ugla. Garvey had huge forearms also. Popeye looks at him and says boy. <laughs> You need to get, eat some more spinach. Yeah. Inside, Ugla came into the season with 233 home runs. He has won this year, so 234 home runs in his career. One of the best marks all time for a second baseman. And he strikes out on a 95 mile an hour fastball. Two outs for Scott Oberg, and that'll bring up Yunel Escobar. 
last two strikeouts, 95 and 96. That's what makes Scott effective when he can blow that fastball by some hitters. But it comes down to again to location for him, and he located those two strikeout pitches. An interesting uh, stat of the day from MLB. The Astros lead the American League in both home runs and stolen bases. The last club to pace the circuit in both the 95 Indians. That was the Alomar Vizquel. Uh, it was Tommy on that team? He had to be on that team, right? Tommy. Somebody was hitting home runs because it wasn't uh, yeah, Vizquel. Travis Fryman, Albert Bell. It's Albert Bell on the club. That's right, he had, that was the year he had 50. One strike count, Oberg working to Escobar, career 276 hitter, hitting 314 coming into the ball game tonight. Movement on that fastball, but it's in. One and one. Bar from Cuba came to the States at the age of 21, spent three days with so many stories like this at sea, along with 36 others, crammed into a boat that he estimated was uh, 25 feet across. That hit him? I don't think so. I think he just dropped the bat. Now he's apologizing to Nick, and I didn't mean to to hit you with it. Not a run on this fastball. Yeah, some run on the fastball. He started to swing, and then he just dropped the bat, and then it came back and it didn't really hit Nick that hard. But it was the right thing to do. Say, hey, sorry about that. Three one. That's right there on the outside corner. Three two and a ground ball foul. Nolan so badly wanted to throw that yes, across the did. field. He wanted to complete the night. He's made a couple of sparkling plays tonight. Five assists. No one does. And the three two misses, ball four. De La Rosa went six innings, allowed four runs, three earned. Six hits, he walked two and struck out one. 101 pitches. Danny Espinosa's two for three. He scored a couple runs. Espinosa flips over to the left side of the plate. He yeah, on occasion will take right handed at bats against right handed pitchers. He Notice how to do that earlier, a couple years ago. He was having trouble from the, from the left side. He just thought about just bagging the switch hitting altogether. Is he 
He spent some time down in the minor leagues because his swing had gotten so out of whack. In your conversation with with players who switch hit, was it, hey, I'm going great from the left side side, and, and they could be in a slump on the other? It's yes. like they had an alter ego. Yeah, right, right. They say, oh, I feel great on this side. The other side, I, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. And, and it could be from day to day. Ooh, so now they're two on. It's the last thing you wanted to do with Bryce Harper strolling to the plate. You get two quick outs with strikeouts, and then you walk Escobar, hit Espinosa. He's got the guard on the right elbow, so that didn't didn't sting at all. So Harper at the plate, one for two, and a walk. Ground out in the first inning, produced a run. He's driven at 69 now. He has the highest on base percentage with that slew of walks in baseball. Fastball for strike one, 461 on base percentage. Slugging 666. That's the best slugging percentage in the game. He was also reached base 33 out of the last 34 games. If you want to criticize the Nats offense, go right ahead. Just don't lay any of the blame right. on his feet. Put him in a separate category. Put everybody else together, and then he, he's out on a on an island by himself. Yep. And Matt Williams said, "I don't have to worry about him if I can get some of the other guys going." Four to one, Washington. Two on, two outs. One and one on Harper in the seventh. Good block by Hundley. And, and these are the things that you know Oberg's going to learn. He's not trying to walk people, hit people. But it can only come with experience. Scott's got really good stuff. But the Rockies consistently, night to night, give out more free passes typically than the opposition, especially when you're facing high quality teams like Washington. I say Washington, fewest number of free passes in the game, and the Rockies are on the other side of that list. And he may work out of this, but the point is. You're adding to the pitch count. You're risking where you're still in contact with the Nationals, losing contact if Harper throws one out the gap. And on top of that, Walt may look to over tomorrow and say, wait a second, he ended up throwing 32 pitches last night as opposed to having a 15 pitch in. Yeah, he's already thrown 28, so he's more than likely down for tomorrow. You're not going to run him out there again. But to your point, I mean, the Rockies are 14th in the league and giving up walks. Washington gives up the fewest, so they're number one. Three and two on Bryce Harper. Now the, the runners are going to be taking off with the pitch, and yet, real good speed at first in Espinosa. Inside another walk to Harper. That's the difference in Bryce Harper this year versus other years. He would have swung at that pitch. He just passed the baton. Maturing. The base is loaded for Ryan Zimmerman after two quick outs, two strikeouts by Scott Oberg. Who wants tacos? Fans follow at Root Sports underscore RM on Twitter to receive alerts for the Rockies taco special and the Rockies score seven or more runs. A walk, a hit by pitch, and another walk. Escobar is at third. Danny Espinosa is at second, and Bryce Harper is at first. 
Ryan Zimmerman tonight a walk an RBI double and then a hot smash to second that DJ LeMay he made a good play on. Just missed ball one. Now you're going to have to get somebody else up and get him going in a hurry and that would be John Axford. The ground is short. Reyes has got it. Feeds DJ, and that'll end the inning. So three men left on in the seventh. No further damage. Four to one. Washington. We're off to the eighth. In our nation's capital. Six outs to work with. Fans, the first 10,000 of you through the gates on Sunday, August 23rd, will receive a Jorge De La Rosa bobblehead. Get your tickets to this game against the New York Mets today so you don't miss out on the Jorge bobblehead. Sunday, August 23rd, against the Mets. New pitcher for the Washington Nationals as we head in here to the top of the eighth inning. Former closer. With the addition of Jonathan Papelbon's been pushed back to a setup role. Drew Storen has 29 saves on the season, a couple holds. Just makes this bullpen even that much more impressive when you can slide somebody like that back to the eighth inning. 077 batting average against for the right handed hitters against Drew. They have loaded up that bullpen. So Storen now in the eighth inning, Kyle Parker at the plate. Nationals up four to one. The first pitch is a broken bat pop up that ran in on the uh, knuckles. One pitch, one out. So here's a comparison. Papelbon has the distinction of being the all time saves leader for two clubs, Philadelphia and Boston. He's 19 of 19 this year. Most of that work obviously in a Phillies uniform. Drew Storen was 29 of 31. It's not like they had an issue. They would just get better by acquiring Papelbon. And Papelbon said the, the only ways he would wave and go somewhere is if he could close. He didn't want to be the eighth inning guy, so Drew Storm said, I'll do what's best for the club. I'll I'll go ahead. If you get him, I'll go back and be that setup guy. Want to know on Daniel Descalso pinch hitting here in the ninth spot in the order, one out in the eighth inning. Storens out of Indiana. He was drafted in the 34th round by the Yankees out of high school. Turned them down to attend Stanford. He's twice an all Pac 10 player. He was a little older, so he went after his sophomore year. You could do that 
at a four year school if you turn 21 after your junior year or your 21st birthday. So he was eligible to go in the draft and he was a first round pick of the Nationals. Oh, that's fine. One and two. He became the 23rd at the time, 2009, the 23rd first round pick out of Stanford all time. Many of those guys have been pitchers. Mike Mussina. Well, the Rockies had a couple of high picks from Stanford. Greg Reynolds unfortunately didn't work out. He was the second pick in the draft. Jason Young going back several years. JY was out of Stanford. Great program. Gonna get a pretty good education also. Yes, you will. Jack McDowell. Yeah, Black Jack Black McDowell. Jack McDowell. 2 2 on Descalso inside. Horn has that delivery where he'll pause for a moment, come up and then pause and then the exploding fastball. All right? After he just gets started, right there. And a walk to Descalso. That seems to be taught more and more as a reminder. De La Rosa does it as a reminder to stay, stay over the rubber. Stay back. Drive don't, the baseball to the plate. You know, don't drift to a home plate and leave your arm behind. That allows your arm to catch up, get on top. Now Zimmerman didn't walk anybody in six and two thirds. He gave up a run on four hits. Jansen faced one hitter. In fact, he threw one pitch. So that's the first walk of the game from the Nationals' perspective. Charlie Blackman's 0 for 3. Hit one ball hard up the first base line. Good pickup by Zimmerman to them to double. And the Rockies can create a little traffic. Again, they're still down by just three runs. Kind of like the game the other day against right. Seattle, where it felt like the Rockies were getting crushed. In fact, Walt had the funny line that he made us privy to after the game. He turned to Tommy Ronalds when Cargo hit that three run home run to make it 3 3. And he said, He said, We're getting crushed 3 3. <laughs> because that's how it felt. Right. They just the, the, the way. Seattle was going in that game. I mean, they well, were Tyron up, Walker and, and was Walker well. was just pitching lights out. But I mean, this game has the same it's feel. It. But you throw a couple runners out there, and, and you know, Nolan or Cargo runs into one again. Next thing you know, you can be even. And that's why it's so important to kind of chip away and never fall behind more than that that grand slam total. They'd never fall behind more than four runs because yet yeah, it's always you, you always feel like you have a chance in the dugout even then even down by four now tonight you're just down by three this is in the air to center field Taylor out there two outs Jose Reyes two ground balls to second and a pop to short will be next for the Rockies Big deal or not a big deal getting reacclimated for Jose to the National League? I don't think so. Not not for somebody that has 13 years of uh, pro ball. You've been to these ballparks before. I think that's the key. They played in this division obviously for a long time. And you're three for six against Drew Storm in your career. Pulled through the hole, a base hit for Reyes, and here we go. The Rockies will get the tying run to the plate in Arenado. And now make that four for seven career against Storm. Gets up on top of the. Tippy toes to 
Make sure you get on top of that ball. Bryce Harper comes up and throws the ball all the way to third, almost threw it away. Now you know Matt Williams is thinking the same thing that we were just talking about a moment ago. Say, oh boy, I felt like I was in control, and now the tight run steps to the plate, and somebody that has 26 home runs and 80 RBIs. Second to Josh Donaldson in ribbies in baseball. Sliders there for a strike. Nolan tonight has swung it better than any Rocky. He's got a couple of hits, a single to left with two outs in the first inning. And they doubled to right center field. There were two different pitches. One was a fastball, the other was a slider. Seemed like last series, Jeff, feel like he was in chase mode too much, a little too yes, aggressive. Too aggressive, but that that you'll have your ups and downs when in the course of the season where you feel like uh, I'm just trying to make the bat happen too fast instead of letting it come to me. Two outs, two on. Another slider. This is slowly hit. This could be a problem. Nolan getting up the line. No play for Escobar. And they're loaded up for Cargo. So clearly this is the Rockies' opportunity. Two outs in the eighth. Base is loaded. And one of the hottest hitters in the game, the player of the month in July, is striding to the plate. We saw Danny Espinosa hit a, a ball like this down the third baseline. Not hit hard, but rolled out there much like a bunt would be. Escobar just picks it up, puts it in his back pocket, and says, here you go, Drew. Now you got a bases loaded and cargo, one of the hottest hitters since June 1st. Storing against cargo. Side ball one. And Cargo is going to have to make sure he gets that that leg kick going at the correct time, restoring in his hesitation. How about this, just the fourth time this year he's come up with the bases loaded. This ball crossed deep right field, way back. Take a good look. You won't see it for long. Cargo has given the Rockies the lead. 5-4 Colorado. He has been one of the most clutch hitters in his career I have ever seen. Third slam of his career. What a time for it. How about this inning? Start off innocently with the walk from Daniel, and now it's a five to four. <laughs> Cargo drops the bat. I got it again off another back wall. Did you see the guy? <laughs> did you see the fan in the front row jump out of his seat yes. to say what? Like, what? Drew Storen, who's been basically lights out all year. The Rockies a two out grand slam from cargo and they lead five four in the eighth. <laughs> yeah. They're going to say wow I got that one too. You said he had to time it up get the foot down and he time. did and he did the first pitch I didn't think he had the timing right. But this one obviously he did but he made sure that he waited with the leg kick until after Drew did the hesitation. The Rockies have seven hits. Cargo and Nolan have five of them. It's not how many you hit, but when do you get them? Yeah, I mean, we had this conversation. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you expect it to happen, but at least, as you said, it gives you a chance. Get a little traffic. They've been dominant on the hill all night, and and you get the right guy up there. You got a you got a swinger's chance. Well, you had to. You really had the right guy at the plate. Well, and before that, Nolan with the with the 75 foot base hit down the third baseline to to load the bases. Here's something else that ended up working to the advantage 
of the Rockies. It's now three and two on DJ. Some of the teams the Rockies have faced lately will match up in the eighth inning. They'll go, you know, lefty right, on yeah. lefty. And Cargo this year's hitting beneath 200 against lefties. Well, and but but Storin, Storin, he's not, he's, their he's, their guy. Not, he's their guy. He's not giving way to Thornton or or Felipe Rivero. Rivero, by the way, is up now, but that'll end the end as DJ strikes out. But Carlos Gonzalez has completely changed the mood in the stadium. Went from happy to sour. Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. By Mike Shaw Subaru, always our lowest price and sales and service guaranteed. And by the Courtyard by Marriott, Western Elegance in the cultural heart of the city. The Rockies trailed 4-0. They've been making a habit of this of late. Coming from behind. Abraham Lincoln looking on as the Rockies got a grand slam in the top of the eighth inning from that man. And it's 5 4 Colorado. And at the bottom of the eighth, Jason Worth will lead things off for Washington. And a couple of changes to tell you about Brandon Barnes out in left field defensively. And on the mound, John Axford. Worth 0 for 2 and a sack fly. Fastball misses. Well, the numbers lately for John have been going in the wrong direction. They've been going up. And part of that has been the number of walks that he's given up. 20 walks. And a lot of them are the leadoff hitter. One chance. One. But a chance here now in a little different role in the eighth inning instead of closing it out in the ninth. Bit low, two and one. If the Rockies are in a safe situation tonight. Look for Tommy Canley. Stuff wise, and you know, where the Rockies are, trying to move certain guys along, see what you have. And they know they have a great arm in Canley. That misses three and one. Getting him more familiar to pressure situations. Behind Justin, or excuse me, behind uh, John Axford is Justin Miller. If John were to get in trouble, I think with his recent history, I think Walt may have a little quicker trigger. That's on the outside corner, three and two. Jason Worth trying to sell that. 
You know, I don't, I I don't think, think so. Jeff Coll you know, Jeff Kellogg's not a young umpire. I don't think he appreciates that. Well, and, and he's been calling the pitch away a strike all night. This one was still on the black. It wasn't as far off as the ones to Escobar were. Three and two. Balls line to right. Cargo is there. One out. So a big first out. And that'll bring up Ian Desmond, who doubled in a run in the sixth inning. Got to be a confidence booster for John. Falling behind 3-1. I don't care how, how many years you've played this game, your confidence will start to be shaken. You'll, there's some self-doubt that'll creep in. Into their mind. It, it's, I think it's happened to every player. It's a constant battle for every player. No it is. How gifted, no matter how strong their resume. And that just a little bit low, evidently. Desmond last 20 ball games coming into tonight against the Rockies it hit 456 with eight home runs. Dangerous guy. And he took a home run cut. It's two and one. And that was swing for not only Washington, just swing and see how far I can hit it. Maybe try to hit the capital. He's trying to hit it to Bethesda. Very rarely do those swings work out. They look good, but they don't connect. He got that in his kitchen. 96 with some run on it, so it's two and two on Desmond. Desmond leads the Nationals in strikeouts with 125. It's uh, among the most punch outs in baseball. Chris Bryan has 131. Jock Peterson 130. They're the only two with more in the National League. Two rookies. Two big swing guys. There's that list. Lucas Duda, who we'll see in New York. Two two. Real close, just inside a tag, three and two. On deck, Wilson Ramos. The guys with pop up and down this lineup. And he lost it. So one out walk. As you said, this has been the issue more than anything for Axford. And, and really not just for John, for, for a number of pitchers on the Rockies staff. Just too many walks. Well, and it happened to Scott Oberg last inning. Got two quick outs. He lived to tell about it. Yeah, but, but, again, but you don't freebies. want to be doing that. It's no. like walking a tightrope. You only have so many safety nets. Ramos a strikeout, a ground ball to third, and a ground ball to short. Justin Miller continues to get ready just in case. <laughs> Top of the strike zone, it's 0 and 1. They've been in. Good pitch. Good job of holding it. Good three, four seconds. It's dancing over at first for me and Desmond, and then for Ramos, just wait so long. And that was in, wasn't a good swing.
I'll tell you the other thing, and hopefully John get a ground ball here, and double play, and make it a, a short inning. This is set up nicely for the Rockies. They're in the the middle portion of the order. Started with the five hole, five, six, seven. And you know what I'm thinking. If, yeah. if you can have a short inning in the ninth, you can avoid seeing Bryce Harper run or go and throw to second is not in time. Stolen base for Ian Desmond, the seventh of the year. Seven for ten in stolen bases. He also picked a good pitch to run on as it was an off-speed pitch at 79 miles an hour. Good jump, head down the whole way. He had to come out because the throw was starting to tail up the line more towards second base. So you have to make sure that ball doesn't get into center field. And DJ Slitterer came around to the front side of the bag yeah, you, you to saw, make sure that didn't happen. You saw Tommy Runnels on the phone. That was with Brian Jones to see if the Rockies wanted a challenge. Evidently, Desmond. Was safe. Two and two. Ground ball to short. Reyes will get the out at first, and Desmond goes to third. He thought about it for a second because Desmond got a late break on that ground ball. Did but the right thing, he though. Get did the out. The, yeah, get the out, but I know he was like, oh, I, I've got a chance, but I'm playing so far back. Desmond doesn't go. He hesitates. So does it, do I go? Yeah, I go because the ball is behind me. He gave that glance, but it would have taken a perfect throw. You don't want a chance. Get the out. That's two outs. And worry about the next hitter and the youngster and Michael Taylor. Taylor tonight, 0 for 3. Two ground balls to Arenado and a strikeout. Rockies up 5-4 on the Gonzalez Grand Slam. Two outs in the eight. Slider misses, ball one. Guys been a, on that list. Yeah, this, this young player's been a tough out with runners in scoring position. 397 average. Strike one. And Desmond walked, stole second, and moved up on that ground out. He is at third. It's the tying run. Good pitch. 97 on the black. That always works. One and two. Yes, it does. And then right where Nick had set up. Framed it. Easy call for Jeff Kellogg. Chase that out there. Another half of baseball. Go back out there. See if he'll swing at a pitch off the plate. That's what they were thinking. It was 98, but it was not really close enough to induce a swing. Two and two. Four runs, six hits, no errors for the Nationals. Five runs, seven hits, and an error for the Rockies. This is on the pens. For the Rosa and Jordan Zimmerman, the original starters. Here's the two-two. Did he go? Did he held up three and two. Good block from Nick. Drop the knees. Don't try to catch it. Just soften the, the blow of the baseball. The youngster looks pretty calm in the dish. I mean, he's just sitting there. Clint Robinson is on deck. With the left handed bat.
So here we go. Three and two on Taylor with two outs. And ground ball just top foul. He went slider. Now let's see if they double up on the slider or go back and throw the 97 mile an hour fastball. Foster on the phone back to the bullpen. Trying to get Logan up quick. Yep. I don't know if that's what conversation's about. Last ball away. Got him. High heat at 97. A pumped up John Axford gets out of the eighth inning. Desmond left at third, and the Rockies continue to lead as we go to the ninth, 5-4. Game. Three guesses. Two outs. Cargo at the plate in the eighth inning against Drew Storen, one of the game's top relievers, and it was a no doubter. Loud and long into the night, and the Rockies went from being down four to one to moving ahead five four. They'll try to add on here in the top of the ninth inning. Ben Paulson will lead it off. It's a left-hander now on the hill. Felipe Rivero. And Rivero with a quick arm and at 95. He has the first pitch in there. Rivero came from Tampa Bay at the Jose Lobatone deal. You got a strong left handed reliever and a solid backup catcher. That's a nasty slider. Well, and that's why he was rated as the second best left hander. Pitching prospect in the Washington chain with a 95 mile an hour fastball and big hard slider. And Paulson on three pitches is gone. Then an RBI single earlier. Tommy Kane to get ready. He's going to handle the ninth. Nick's 0 for 3. Ground out, strike out, fly out. Curveball. Curve 
Does it not seem like every game of late, win or lose, has come down to a <laughs> dramatic eighth and ninth inning, or in the case the other day, ninth uh, inning and then eleventh uh, inning? <laughs> yeah, it, it has, but that's that's kind of the makeup of this club. Is it's not ever over. This is the old line from the movie. It ain't over till it's over. You know, and you got to. I, I know it's cliche to say this, but this club's 16 games under 500. Right. Not been the kind of season anybody had hoped for. A week ago, you traded a guy who's been one of the marquee names in the history of the franchise, marquee players in the history of the franchise, and they continue to battle. Rio's in there, three and one on Hunter. Tonight, case in point. I mean, you're, you're, you're down. Drew Storm, who's night, you know, saves all the games. He's moved into the setup role. You know, oh boy, but no, they didn't do that. They they got the one out walk, and all those runs are scored with two outs. Three and two, and, and again, it's not. I think sometimes people say, what, what do you expect them to do? You've seen Jeff as long as you play the difference between really grinding out at bats yes. when, when in the standings there may not be a whole lot to play for and and teams that are kind of going through the motions kind of peeking ahead to the offseason. This ball's line to right stay fair it is shoots into that corner Nick Huntley is going to have a one out double. That's kind of an illustration well, of what we're talking about. And some of those clubs that you're talking about, if you get ahead early in the game, it's over. Yeah, it's it's over. They're not going to do it. But you, you can tell a little bit of a fight when the club is down and then you score late for a team that's you know 45 and 61 right now. And for Nick, another double going the opposite way. And that's part of the reason why his career average has climbed up almost eight, nine points overall from where it's been coming into the season because he is now hitting over 300. Brandon Barnes first at bat. He came in last inning for Kyle Parker on defense. Well, throw out a, another run here. How big would that be for the birthday boy, Tommy Canley? We'll just give him an, uh, some more breathing room in a role that he has not been accustomed to being in. Two. 11 of the Rockies 18 games since the All-Star break have been decided by one or two runs. And Barnes got that fastball at 97. Man, this is quite an arm. It's quick. I mean, it comes up and gets behind him and then it, it's out of the hand. Baseball turned left goes there it is and the ball kind of popped up nicely for him to grab otherwise Barnes is going to reach I think this went off of Brandon's foot inadvertently So the Rockies will send Drew Stubbs up to pinch hit Boy Drew's been outstanding in this role Six for his last nine pinch hitting that would be outstanding. Seven for 13 overall. Okay, if he spikes that breaking ball, Huntley's going to get an enormous walking lead because you have a left hander on the hill. And you also have Ramos behind the plate that is not really known as being as a strong a defensive catcher, it's more for his offense. Checking quickly with Jeff, one and one. Or excuse me, with uh, with Jenny. I'm sorry, Jenny. Yeah, no worries, guys. Drew Stubbs in that pinch hitter's role since he was recalled from AAA in early July. He's six for nine in this role, and he said really his approach 
has just been to be aggressive. He's trying to get the best pitch that he can see. So it's that balance of being patient yet being aggressive. And for Drew, it's really worked out, and we'll see how he does when he sit back. Well, that gives you an idea, Jenny, of how locked in he is because that's a pitch that if you're not locked in, you probably swing, swing. at. Yeah, if you're swinging, you don't you don't see where the location is. Use a seat out of the hand and then swing wildly. Only a third, two and one with two outs on Stubbs. Inside again. Three and one. You know, he may be cautious here knowing he has a left handed bat coming up in Blackman. Now, not just any old left handed bat. Obviously, Charlie's had a marvelous season. Three one. Called strike. Stubbs turned it. Drop the bat. Not to go back and pick it up. The third or fourth time that somebody dropped the bat tonight, started to take a, a jog down to first base. Well, listen, you guys talk at the dugout. We did. Say what kind of zone does he have? He's had he's, he's had east that west. all night long. He's had a, a large east west zone. Three two. Okay, it made uh, everybody flinch, but that was out of the zone. So a walk to Stubbs. And that'll bring up Charlie. Now it's kind of interesting. Here comes Steve McCaddy. It's interesting for me in that you have a, a guy who can really run at first. Charlie at the plate. Charlie's a big man. Obstructs the catcher a little bit. What's your thoughts? I, I like the call. I like where you're going with this because if you get a, a young pitcher on the hill and he breaks or you give a false break, he might balk and then get a run in that way. If not, Drew goes ahead and steals the base. If he feels like he's not going to get there, then you get the run down, the runner third. I mean, so many more options. Available to you with a speed at first base like Stubbs has. So Blackman's 0 for 4, facing the hard throwing Felipe Rivero. First and third, top of nine. Rockies ahead 5 4 on the cargo eighth inning grand slam. Right. To produce a a little more room for Tommy Canely. Boy, that ball skipped on the dirt a little bit. Only a smart baseball player, and that's all he's reading. He's reading angle of the ball, and that shoots away from Ramos. He can also get off as far as the third baseman is off, so he's a good 15, 17 feet away from third. It's in the air to center field. Taylor is going to make the catch. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Tommy Canely will try to close it out. Pinch hitter and then the top of the order for Washington.
Time for our century link link to what's next. Here's tomorrow's matchup. Eddie Butler will face the former San Diego State star Steven Strasburg. He's coming off the disabled list with un Strasburg like numbers, but that's tomorrow. Right now it's the bottom of the ninth inning. The Rockies have Tommy Canely, who turned 26 today. Trying to close this out, and it would be his first major league save. He had 30 minor league saves. Quite the birthday present. And we talked about Rule 5 guys with Dan Ugler. Let's not forget last year Tommy Canley was Rule 5 guy from the New York Yankees. With a different role tonight, but just think of it as the same thing you've been doing. Don't overthink this. Use that great changeup that you've developed. And the fastball. The, the whole key to this inning, though, is make sure you don't get to Bryce Harper. Well, Bryce Harper would be due up fourth this inning. Clint Robinson is going to pinch hit. Robinson, long journey to the big leagues. Out of Troy in Alabama. And he had a home run yesterday, a three-run home run in their 8-3 victory over Arizona. He started in the ballgame yesterday at first. So here we go in the ninth. And the first pitch of changeup is in there for a strike. That's right, but it was a 90 <laughs> mile an hour changeup. You look up at the board and that's what you're you're thinking. Was that a fastball? What was that? That was the fastball at 96, and it's quickly 0-2. We have Yunel Escobar on deck and Danny Espinoza. 5 4 Colorado. Got him on a changeup away. Three pitches and there's one out. Changeup, fastball, changeup. Two at 90, one at 95. Wonderful first batter to face when you're looking at your first save of your career. Same arm action as the fastball and tailing away from the left-handed power of Robinson. Better birthday present than two more outs for Canley and a chance to shake hands. Rockies ahead by a run. Here's Yunel Escobar. And the changeup is outside, 1 0. Escobar 0 for 3 in a walk. He has seven home runs this year. And another changeup. I mean, I think that's, a, that's his go to favorite pitch now. Well, I think he commands it better than uh, Strange. It is to say, he commands it better than his fastball. There aren't many guys that can touch 98 that have no problem throwing changeups back to back to back. I think his mechanics are better with it. There's the 1 1. There's, that was his, there's 98, but it's high and away. But he tried to overthrow it, he pulled off on it. Maybe not away, but high. Washington's aware that the Mets came from behind to beat Tampa tonight at the drop four to three. It's the two one. And this with that change up it's three and one. Base. At six 
walks, six walks tonight by the Rockies, and a hit batter. Danny Espinosa at the plate, double, fly ball right field, single, and he was the man who was hit by a pitch, so he's been on base three times tonight. And five of those walks have come in the last four innings. High pop, playable in the infield. DJ LeMayhew. Two outs. And now it'll come down to Tommy <laughs> Canley against Bryce Harper. Wouldn't you know? Listen to this crowd when he's introduced. But Walt's going out. Now it begs the question. Do you walk it? Well, Boone Logan was warming up. He wasn't last time I looked out there. Now the bullpen's empty. So this may be Walt just discussing uh -huh. how he goes about Bryce Harper. I don't know. You know, I'm just throwing it out there. I, you know, it's I, I still think. Listen. You know how hard this game is. Yeah. Guess what? As great a year as Bryce Harper's had, 67% of the time he makes I, I, an out. I, 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 I right? completely understand that. And so also you understand push the, you push you the, the time run a second. And the winning run on base. And you put the winning run I, on base. I hear you. And the guy behind just, him, I know he hasn't had a good year, but Ryan Zimmerman's got a pretty nice baseball card. I think he, if, if Bryce Harper hits one four miles, you tip your cap. I just like the matchup. I, I like to see power this. on power. Yeah. Crowd all standing here at Nationals Park. Two outs in the ninth. Escobar at first. Fastball right down Broadway at 96, strike one. Harper tonight, one for two in an RBI. He has walked twice. He has scored two runs. growth for Tommy Kane exactly one and one on Harper change up swung on and missed it's one and two did that bottom just fall out of that baseball or what comes out of the hand looking like a fastball mid thigh it's just a devastating pitch there's no way you can sit on it when a guy throws in the upper ninety. You can't sit on it. Now what do you go to? I slide for, for Tommy. I think he goes back to the changeup. One and two on Harper. He went fastball and Harper with that beautiful swing covered it. Yeah, I'd get a shake here. And Nick Hunt is so smart behind the plate, regardless of whatever pitch they decide on. You, you got to get a shake, don't you? Yes. You throw the shake. Just if you're Nick, you shake your head no, just to, so Tommy does the same thing, and then that creates some doubt for the hitter. And here comes the changeup. Another one-two. He's got him. Tommy Canley strikes out Bryce Harper. First career save. The Rockies come from behind and shock the Nationals 5-4. to four. What a way to begin a most difficult road trip. What an unlikely victory as well, the way this thing was unfolding the first six, seven innings. 
Carlos Gonzalez's grand slam in the eighth, providing the difference. Tommy Canely finishing it off for his first save of the season. Another change up. Yeah, get excited, young man. Happy, happy birthday, too. Yep, happy birthday, and that was a dirty change up. What a job by Canely.